from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Jack ate a lot. From Chicago, Illinois, Kristoff. Everybody and welcome once again to Championship Bowling here at the Strike and Spare Lanes in Northbrook, Illinois. As we continue through our field of 24 of the nation's outstanding bowling stars, both making their second appearance. $1,000 to the winner, $500 to the loser, over $60,000 in prizes, all competition sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. A 300 game worth 10,000 additional dollars. We're still shooting at Bobby Kowalik's leading total of 14-18. Last week, a man moved up into the second spot, Lindy Farragalli from Patterson, New Jersey. A sensational 723, a clutch finish at 245 to give him 1360. That's what the boys are shooting at. Joe Kristoff from Chicago, who had a 655 start, and Jack Adelot from Minneapolis, Minnesota, with 680. So there's 25 pins here separating these two boys, and they're thinking of 1360. Be interesting to see what happens. We'll be ready for the first game of three in just one moment. Jack Adelot from Minneapolis. Minnesota won the toss, elected to start on the left side, throws too high, too high in the middle of the 10th bend. So Adelot, who opened his first match with 680, 219, 218, and a great finish, 243, when he defeated Al Farragalli with 637, and Farragalli is the fellow right now that Adelot is thinking about, because he'll need another 680. 681, look out, he's got it. Adelot with the spare in the first frame. Here's Joe Kristoff from Chicago. Joe will need a 700 total. He's 25 behind Adelot. There's the first one. So Kristoff will need 706. Adelot, 681. Christoph moving to the left on the strike. Throws, looking for two. He's there, the first two. <coughs> so Adelot with a spare in the first frame, converting the 10 pin, Christoph off with two. Joe, who has rolled a 778 series on championship bowling, that's four pins from the highest three, shot by Glenn Allison, 782. Adelot is too tight, again the four and the seven. On another championship bowling series, Kristoff put together 255, 277, and 246. Joe settled for about 70 pins less than that, which would give him 708, which would be just enough to put him in one of the spots for the championship roll-offs with a $15,000 added first. Cover by eight a lot, 18 spare. We go into the third. Each of these fine bowling stars bowling two complete frames. All games are started on the left side. That bowler bowling one complete frame, sitting down, and the competition goes from right to left. Here at the strike and spare lanes on the north side of Chicago in Northbrook, Illinois. That's the ball. Adelot gets that first one. So the first strike is the toughest one. The first double is the next assignment, and Mr. Kristoff has handled both of those situations in his first two tries. Now he goes for three. His wife, June, in the audience, as usual. June Kristoff, a great bowler. On the distaff side, June averages around 190. Too high, though, on the nose, 3-6-10. And Mr. Adelot 
with a double to be right back into this game as Chris Kopp was unable to continue that string. Joe won his first match, defeating Hank Lauman of Los Angeles, so both of these boys have already won a $1,000. One of them will make it two wins. Somebody's got to lose. Somebody's not going to get enough, as they say. Cross lane, 3 6 10. Christoph covered. Nice shot. Now, both of these television lanes have been completely resurfaced and conditioned to American Bowling Congress specifications. We're using brand new AMF, Kimwell, plastic coated ABC approved pins. We do not make it too easy. The boys have got to work for every pin, for every strike. Kristoff on the left, on the spare. Has a nine pin lead, throws wide open, a six, seven, ten. So Joe, after starting with two, pointed to the three, six, ten he covered, and boy, he's got a big job here. When you need 680, 681, as eight a lot needs, Kristoff needs 706. You can't make too many mistakes. Farragalli needed a 700 total last week. He got it with 723. Hurry! Oh, great try. Kristoff just goes back to six spin. He went for broke. It was three or nothing. So he ends up with 17 and eight. Kristoff now with 72 in the fourth. That makes his job that much more difficult. As Adelot tries for two, he's there. The four pin stops him. So Adelot, after two spares, finds the range in that one three pocket, gets one, loses the four pin in the fourth. Jack was born in Owensburg, Kentucky in 1926, raised in Texas, then to Tulsa, Oklahoma. He became the 1951 Oklahoma Bowler of the Year. Moved to Minneapolis in 1954. Actually threw his first bowling ball in 1941 in Dallas, Texas. Eight a lot now, to the left. On the spare, throws it up. Look here, 7-10 on a pocket hit. 7-10, that in-betweener. So eight a lot. Filling the fourth, taking the lead, now uh, finds himself trailing his opponent. If Kristoff can fill the fifth frame, he takes the one out, he's open in the fifth, 85. 18 and nine. Here is Joe Kristoff, a Toledo product, born in Toledo in 1920, came to Chicago in 46 and he has been in the Windy City ever since. Drawing too high again, and he got the four, seven out of there. And uh, Mrs. Kristoff happy with that situation. We're at the end of five. Eight a lot is 85 open. Kristoff is 72. He is on a strike. just inside the 15-foot mark. Five steps. Too high, Joe. Oh, he dropped that one. There's the 3 6 10 with company. So Kristoff has been crowding that head pin a chance to really get away from his opponent. Being on the strike, let's see what he can do with this. Come on, Joe, give it a little. Oh, right around the seventh pin. A great try as Joe throws that three pin right around the seven. He is open again in the sixth as Jack Adelot moves in in the sixth, needs the mark. Here's the shot, looks good, he's in, and he carries. So Adelot will move it left now, as he has taken the lead again, as the boys play, you can have it, I don't want it. 
This will be Jack's second chance for the double. And that 681 means he's got to get some strikes. Here he comes, and this time he shakes it up. The 5 7 was up there. Great action by this star from Minneapolis, Minnesota, for the big double to put him out in front by some 15 pins. Joe having trouble sliding. And of course, immediately you start thinking about your opponent's shoe. Cristato, four pin, pretty good hit. So eight a lot, uh, for some reason, giving Kristoff trouble in the sliding department. Eight a lot didn't bother Farragalli in his match. So possibly we have something going here. Don't know what's going to happen. The four pin, Mr. Kristoff has it. So Joe now moves left. Looks like he's going to try that approach again. 100 for Kristoff in the sixth and a spare in the seventh. Joe is a member of the AMF staff of champions. Kept quite busy touring the nation. I believe we said Joe takes five steps. He takes four and he took four on that one and he left four. Right through the middle as Kristoff is pulling that ball. He started with two. He went on the nose. The three, six, ten, he covered it. On the nose in the fourth. He got a strike in the fifth. He was on a nose in the sixth. A little high in the seventh, leaving the four. He's on the nose again. His third straight wide open split on the left side. He gets two of them. So Kristoff has three wide open holes. Railroads, they call them here in Chicago. Three in succession on lane 47 at the strike and spare lanes in Northbrook, Illinois. Kristoff is being bothered somewhat. Ate a lot with a strike here, can get long gone. The 10 pin stops him, and that's a short pin, Jack. Jack is a former sales representative, now a member of the AMF staff and a member of the Professional Bowlers Association, has had 752 on television back in 1957. 10 pin, despair. The lot covers in the eighth. He has a margin of some 30 pins as he moves to the left side. You know, if you wives feel that you're not good enough to bowl with your husband, why don't you get in some practice during the day in the afternoon while dad's at work and the children are in school? If you're in the beginner's class, inquire about taking lessons. After a while, you can surprise dad. In fact, you might beat him. Ten pin is down. And Adelot wasn't too sure of that one. The 710 was up there again. Adelot left the 710 in the fifth on a pocket hit. The strike in the ninth. Kristoff moves in, trailing by 30 pins. Joe having trouble with the approach. Seems to be sticking. Here she comes. Finally kicks the 10. There's still about four or five of those AMF. Kim Weld pin still on the pin deck. So Joe having no trouble on the right side, all trouble here on the left. He's got to think about throwing it out. And his wife, June, sitting directly behind lane 47, probably is wondering what Dad will do with this one. Throw it out, Joe. That's it. That's all there is to it. So simple, boy. And that's the Kristoff we watched in practice. Joe with a double. He started with two and has just had trouble after trouble here in... Three consecutive frames, the fourth, the sixth, and the eighth. He has straightened it out in the tenth, trying for two to get out of this thing with 184. That's the ball, Joe. Whoop! 7-10. Kick the 10, leaves nothing but the 7. Joe Kristoff. 
who holds the second highest three games ever rolled on championship bowling, 778. Gwen Ellison has the high three, 782. Then we have a couple of 770s. Buddy Bomar, Buzz Fazio. Then comes Bobby Kowalik, 763, rolled here in this series. It's cover, pissed off with 173. And here's Jack Adelot. He's on a strike. He can take a 40-pin lead. If he can cover him up here in the 10th. Set it, boy. On the nose, 10 pin. So both these boys crowding that pocket. Adelot was the Minnesota match game champion in 1956, 57, and again in 1958. Quite a record up there. The cover, he has the 10 pin in the 10th. So the count will give him 194, a lead of 21 pins with the full load, as the boys say. Next week, it'll be Carmen Salvino and Ray Shannon. Christoph watching Adolf getting the full count of 10 pins for 194. Well, we're off rather slowly here this week, but big things are liable to happen. The winner, Jack Adelot, 184, Joe Kristoff, 173. We'll be back for the second game of three here on Championship Bowling. This is Fred Wolf. Right now, I bet your hosts have something interesting for you. The scores for the first game, Joe Kristoff, 173, Jack Adelot, 194. Lindy Farragelli, 1360 is what the boys are thinking about. We're going to have to get this thing moving in the next two games. How about you folks here in Northbrook, Illinois? A little encouragement here, we might get the big game. All righty, here we go. Joe Kristoff will start off the second game. Between games, both approaches were wiped down with steel wool to keep Mr. Kristoff sticking and he leaves the fort bend. Very interesting little situation here. Many of you, I'm sure, have watched Bill Lillard on television. Jack Adelot and Bill Lillard were brought up together in Texas, and they have both developed a theory that they should keep the heel of their left shoe clean, and Jack constantly wipes it down with a towel. Christoph feels this is making him stick. So we have a little uh, situation going between these two fellas that obviously is affecting the scoring. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. There's still a thousand dollars out here. Going to the winner, five hundred dollars to the runner-up, and Adelot throws. He is in there with a strike. Now Adelot, who needs six eighty-one, starting with one ninety-four, still has to pick himself up about four eighty-seven in his last two games if he wants to do anything with Al Farragalli who sits up there with 1360. It's still Bobby Kowalik's 1418 Farragalli 1316. 1360 rather. 10 pin. That medium hit on the left side not uh, too conducive to strikes as we have seen the 5, the 7, the 10 all three of them, or any two of them, or in this case, just the 10 pin. We've had a couple of sevens on the same hit. Cross lane, 10 pin covered by Adelot. So Christoph will move in on the right side. The 1961 American Bowling Congress doubles champion with Don Ellis, title they won in Detroit. This fella has had two 300s in a row back in 1948 in a match game. That's it. So Christoph gets it in there in great shape. The strike in the second. He trails by 21 pins. The strike going for him in the second against Adelot Spare. A chance to cut that margin down. Joe needed 706. And to get 706 with a 173 start. He's going to have to do nothing but strike the rest of this match. 
Got to hurry, Joe. Doesn't get there. The two and the four. Kicks out the five. Christoph has had 21 perfect scores. Four of them sanctioned. The cover and the spare. So Adelot not losing any ground. Christoph unable to get the double. Adelot missed his double. We go into the third frame. turn it'll never get there oh he got a piece of the bucket but he has the two four five and the eight the bucket the cluster and a real tough one and he loses four pins in counts next week from Milwaukee it'll be Ray Shannon the shrimp as they call him going against Carmen Salvino of Chicago gotta cover these he's got a nice shot You'll never miss it when you hit it right there. Jack ate a lot from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Throws a three-finger M-flight ball with a semi-fingertip. Attended Woodrow Wilson High School and also Terrell Prep in Texas. Here's the big turn. This time he gets there. That's the one that Adelot was looking for in the second frame. So he has a strike going. Kristoff now in the fourth. That looks like it. So Kristoff uh, doing very well here on the right side. Adelot on the strike. Kristoff on the strike. The margin, four pins. So Joe started the first game with a double, finished it with a double for 173. Adelot has had one double in the sixth and seventh frames of the first game. Now trying for his second. It's a big one. It's Christoph on the nose, and he leaves the sixth pin. And Joe is having his troubles here on the left side. Going back to that first game, Kristoff uh, was wide open here three times. He almost had another one. The 6-7-10, the 3-6-7-10, and the 4-6-7. Kristoff with the cover, he's 80. No doubles. Eight a lot now, moves in right. This is Jack's favorite side. He won the toss. He liked it to finish here in two games. He throws it up, sets it, and he carries, and that's a big double. So at the end of five, eight a lot, 56 with two. Kristoff is 80 on the spare. We're in the sixth. Second game, Adelot's on two. Better dig it. Got there thin, no shake. Leaves the seven. Boy, that's a dangerous hit on that alley. That lane, let's call it the lane. And Adelot's well aware of it. He left a 7-10 on a pocket hit there in the first game. So unable to move, getting just two, keeps Kristoff very much in the running. And there's the cover. So Joe Kristoff now. With a game and a half to go, has got to go to catch his opponent, Jack Adelot, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here's Joe's favorite side. He's in again. Very easy. And now I'm sure that Joe's going to give this one a lot of thought. He got a strike here in the second frame, then he was wide open in the fourth, sixth, Eighth, and he got a strike in the tenth. This game, he's been high with a four pin. Short, high. This time, not going to be high. Oh, man, he piles them up on the left side. That's the Kristoff we've watched in practice sessions. So at the end of seven for Kristoff, 
He's 100 working on two as eight a lot moves up in the seventh trailing now by five pins here in game number two. on the scenic route, as the boys say. He threw that one out the window. The one, the two, the four, the seven. Eight a lot with a six pin count. Joe Kristoff now in the spot here to take the lead for the second time. He had the lead in the first two frames when he doubled. He was open in the third, and eight a lot has been out in front ever since. The one, the two, the four, the seven. Nice shot. Now that one actually can be made uh, a couple of ways. Of course, hitting the one three pocket, which is the surest way if the ball is in the pocket. Then you can make it as Adelot made it with the ball going through the head pin full and playing the carom with the two, four, and the seven, or throwing a real swinger and have the ball go right down the line. That's the toughest way. We're in the eight. Adelot throws on the nose the three, six, ten. So Jack having his problems, Christoph having left shoe problems, that mentally, I'm sure, is affecting Joe. He thinks he's going to stick, I suppose, and then doesn't. There's the cover. He a lot has the spare. So the boys have agreed to putting a towel right in front of the settee here so that uh, they can wipe their shoes clean as Kristoff moves in on the right side. Joe having no trouble here. In this game, he has all three strikes on 48 as he throws one more in and leaves the four pin. So this match very close up to this point. Joe Kristoff, another one of our stars here in our field of 24, who has rolled a 300 game on television. Back in February 1955, Joe won himself a brand new automobile. At the four pin, the cover. So this match is even 10 pins separating. Christoph has 11 in this game number two. 138 spare for eight a lot, 149 spare for Christoph. The margin there is 11. Joe lost the first game by 21. So the margin is 10 pins. One strike. We're in the ninth. As Joe winds one up. Four pin again. And he can't hit him any better than that. Could very well have been a triple. Say, I'll bet there's a lot of you out there who have never bowled that wish you had so that you wouldn't feel embarrassed when your friends ask you to join them sometime. Now, did you know that many bowling establishments give instructions for beginners? The instructors will get you started. They'll correct your particular mistakes. There you are, just like that. That's how to convert the four pins. So there's no reason for waiting. Learn how to bowl. It's a lot of fun. Win the ninth. Eight a lot. Up with the strike. Now, Jack hasn't had an open frame this game, and he still needs a double. For 200, he has lost 12 pins in counts. Christoph has lost two pins in counts. As you look back at score, counts are quite important in a match like this. 12 pins means an extra strike, an extra double. We're in the tent. Adelot needs it, throws it, stands in, he gets it. So Adelot with the first strike in the tent, the chance for 218. He goes all the way. Christoph can tie him. Adelot was the St. Paul Classic champion in 56 and 57 and again in 1959. He's got that 4-7 out of there for his third. Three in a row. The count will give him 218. That'll give him 412. He needed 681. Now he'll need a 270 game to catch Lindy Farragelli 
who sits in that vul vulnerable spot. Second place, 13 6. Bobby Kowalik, the young reporter, safe for another week. Will that total stand? That's the question. With Billy Waylou with 720, Pat Patterson with 747. Some of the real big shooters still to come. We're in the tenth. Kristoff throws. He gets there. Leaves the seven pin with a wiggle. And the AMF automatic pin spotter will set that seven pin right back off spot and put the wiggle right back on it. And that's not easy. The count for 207. The margin here could be 11 pins again. Eight a lot won the first one, 194 to 173. The margin there, 21 pins. This game, eight a lot will pick up at least 11 more. The question is, will it be enough? Kristoff sets it too high on the nose. Gets nine of them for 206. Well, the boys are going to have to loosen them up here for the third game for those big totals. The winner in the second game, making it two in a row, Jack Adelot from Minneapolis, Minnesota, with 218 over Joe Kristoff of Chicago with 206. This is Fred Wolf. We're waiting for the big third game. Don't go away. Right now, something for everybody. Scores through the first two games. Joe Kristoff, 173, 206 the second game, a total of 379. For Jack Adelot, 194, 218, making it two straight, the total 412. Adelot leading now by 33 pins, still $1,000 hanging in the balance. Jack will need a big one here to see what he can do about sending Lindy Farragalli back to Patterson, New Jersey. 1360. That's the figure we're thinking about right now. Are you folks here ready for game number three? Here we go. Jack Adelat. Adelat starting the third game. He needs a big one, a real big one. Ready, throws, can't make any mistakes. Sets it in, gets the first one. Joe Kristoff now trailing by 33 pins. $1,000 to the winner. $500 to the runner-up. Both these boys won their first matches. Kristoff throws. A little tight. Kicks over to 4-7. 194, 218, a total of 412 for Adelot. He needs 269 for 681, which would give him 1361. 269. Boy, you can't make many mistakes. Kristoff has 379. Joe can't make it, but he can win the match. Four pin stops him again. Well, Joe's looked at that one. He had one in the first game. In the second game, he had two of them in a row, and he had one in the first frame. He had one in the eighth and ninth. So Kristoff has had five four pins. Has the spare. So eight a lot now, moving in on the right, protecting a 33 pin margin to win the match. He needs a lot of strikes for 269, which will give him a spot in the finals. Providing the rest of the boys don't top it. There's the double. Next week, it'll be Ray Shannon and Carmen Salvino. Salvino going in with 656. Then it'll be Dick Weber and Lee Juglard. Juglard has 671. In three weeks, Ed Lebansky and Lloyd Countryman. Lebansky with 672. Countryman with 693. Then Pat Patterson has a 747, Billy Waylu a 720, Rogoznica a 665, and Howard a 660. Too high, 4-6, and that puts Mr. Adelot out of business. 269 now is out of the question, and lane 47, the left side, continues to be the bugaboo here. Kristoff was open three times in the first game on the left. 
Adelot drew the 7-10 on the left, and now the 4-6. So we've had five wide open splits on the left side. No opens on the right. Christoph now fighting back, facing 33 pins. He's got some of them back right there. We're in the fourth frame. Christoph now 40 strike. A double here by Joel. Pull that margin down to under 20 pins. Justice, a solid 10 pin. Christoph finally gets in there, right where he wanted it, and up jumped the devil. Joe's career as a great star goes back to 1947, 47, 48, and 49, when he was a member of the National Match Game Champions. Team, look out, got it. We had a chance to see him roll a 300 score in national five-man match game competition against Detroit. He had 20 strikes in a row. Here's Adelot. We're in the fourth. That was long before this youngster got started. Get it up there. There it is. So Adelot back in that pocket now. Both boys having great success here on the right side. Many times the boys watch their opponents do things and it will affect them. And again, many things affect themselves. As Adelot throws one more, he's too high. Hey, kicks the four out of there. Oh, he got a lot of action on the left side with that one. So Adelot right back now to get that uh, 33 pins back. He's got five frames to hold on to them as Kristoff moves in in the fifth. On the spare, Joe is in four times, once more. That's five in a row, he's head in the pocket. But Christoph now beginning to level off, but it's a little late. At the end of five, Adelot is 56 on two, Christoph is 80 on one. We go into the last half of the third game. Joe Christoph trailing. By 39 pins, he has five frames to get them back. Sets it there. There's another one. Well, Mr. Christoph has had six in a row in that pocket. He has lost a four pin and a ten pin. As Adelot moves in on the right, he can go all the way for 266. And that'll put him three pins short. He'll never get there. He has the cluster of four, the bucket. And Joe Kristoff now sitting in the driver's seat on a double. Adelot has a tough spare to cover. And that 39 pins can go long gone here with a couple of more strikes by Kristoff on his turn on the lanes. Adelot will want this spare. It's a big one for him. Five steps reaches. Joe didn't get there, left the blind pin. He is open on a six pin count. And Joe Kristoff now can make a big move to pull this match out of the fire. Joe can pick up 30 pins on Adelot with two more strikes. He trailed by 33. So it'll be a hair-raising finish. Adelot throws too high, wide open, and Joe can take the lead with two strikes. From a 39-pin deficit to the lead in two frames. That's what can happen if Kristoff can get the strike in the seventh. So more problems on the left side. Another wide open split. That makes three for each man. Kristoff got his three in succession in the first game. It held him down to 173. And Joe moves in now on the left side. It's a big strike, worth $1,000. He's on two. Joe likes this side. He's there once more. He's in, no mistake. But Kristoff has buried seven of them. You know that every year, the Salvation Army helps over 60,000 homeless men become productive 
and self-supporting citizens, your contribution to the Salvation Army can help these people to a fuller life. Kristoff now out in front for the first time since the second frame of the first game. Dig it, boy. Oop, five ten jumped up at him. So Joe could have had a few pins to work on in the last two frames with that strike. The cover here will give him a lead of 40 pins in the third game. He trailed by 33. The margin now seven pins. Kristoff has them with two frames to go for the Chicagoan. Adelot has three frames to go as he steps up in the eighth. Jack Adelot, the 1951 Fort Worth Classic champion, has rolled 13 perfect scores, has a great ABC tournament record, fine record in the ABC Masters tournament. Needs a strike to go on. He's there, he carries. Well, we got something real interesting going here. Now, as we've pointed out many times, the advantage of a man being on a strike over a man on the spare is very noticeable right now because Adelot, who trails by seven pins going into the ninth, is on the strike. This one would give him a three-pin lead with one frame to go. It's a big one. He's there, and he does not carry the four pin. It's still Kristoff by three. Just a bit tight. Get a piece of it. The four pin did not fall. It's still Bobby Kowalik, the young Detroiter, with 14-18. Lindy Farragalli with 13-60. As Joe Kristoff and Jack Adelot wind up their second appearance here on Championship Bowling, the top two scorers return for the $15,000 added purse in the championship roll-offs. Kristoff is there, and he's got a big strike in the ninth, and he can close the door in Adelot's face with two more. Actually, he needs two more and eight pins. the nose, the big four, and Mr. Kristoff just handed Adelot a $1,000 bill. Well, Joe's had four of them over there, and boy, they have been doozies. He's had the three, six, seven, ten. The four, six, seven. And the six, seven, ten, and now the big four, two on each corner, double P knuckle, and he closes with 205. So Jack ate a lot. Needs nothing but a fill here. He has a 33 pin advantage. Here it comes. He's there. Look here, the four, five, seven. Well, the boy's a real gentleman here, and Mr. Kristoff may, uh, may pick up $1,000 just uh, sitting on the bench. 165 is 198. Kristoff will win it. Eight a lot needs this shot for $1,000. The four, the five, the seven. He's inside. He throws it out. Here it comes. It's not over there far enough, and the winner's Joe Kristoff. Both boys stumbling home. Well, a very sad conclusion here for both boys. They were both open in the 10th. Adelot needed a mark to win. Open with a 4-5-7 for 164. Kristoff 205. And this is Fred Wolf at the Strike and Spare Lanes in Northbrook, Illinois. Pay attention. Here are the final results. Joe Kristoff, 173, 206, and 205 for a total of 584. Jack ate a lot, 194, 218, 164, and the total, 576. The winner, Joe Kristoff, by eight pins. Let's give him a nice hand. <laughs> now let's
Let's take a look at the totals for the 12, for the six games. Joe Kristoff with his 655 in his first match, a total of 1239. Jack Adelot went in with 680, his total 1256. Though he didn't disturb the leaders, it's still Bobby Kowalik, the young Detroiter, with 1418. Bobby putting together series of 655 and a sensational 763. Lindy Farragelli, who last week got up into the top two, 637 and his 723 of last week gives Lindy 1360. So it's still Kowalik and Farragalli, the two boys, of course, that just have to sweat it out. Let's bring out Jack Adelot here, the runner up. Jackson? $500. And uh, I'm sure that you were as aware as we were that you needed a mark to win that match. I sure was. Now, would you uh, admit to possibly making sure you weren't going to be too high and sort of you thought you might at least... Yes, uh, I had three holes or three splits uh, right. previous in that game, and I'd been hitting this lane pretty good, so I, I swung for it, but I was a little bit too hard. As now, a result, the ball came in light. That's right. I know that in a lot of matches over the years, in a lot of instances, a lot of boys have little different ideas on this so-called, they don't like to say playing it safe, uh, actually, uh, you played it a little careful then, cozy, didn't you? You want to make sure when you need a strike uh, or a mark like that, that you're not high. That you're not high. high. On the other I hand... You've got to be a little bit light, Fred. Some boys say, throw it in there and let it go. Well, you played good. it a little safe. All right, Jack, good luck to you. Have a nice trip back to Minneapolis. Fine. Jack Thank ate a lot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, let's call out Joe Kristoff. He's the winner. Joseph? $1,000. Thank you, Fred. I'll bet you when you threw that big four, though, in the tenth, you didn't give uh, a dime for your chances, did you really? No, I really overturned that one. I went way around the ball. Uh, I felt we were ta you were talking to uh, Jack about uh, making sure of getting it to the pocket. Uh, what I tried to do was drive the ball to the pocket a little harder, and uh, by so doing, of course, I went around it a little bit, and I pulled the ball in. Well, on that side, on that side over there, as we refer the left side, Joe, you were uh, you were leaving up uh, picket fences there for a while. You had them standing on all corners. What well, happened there? Uh, I was, well, the ball was snapping for me pretty hard at the end, uh, and that's why I tried to deliver the ball just a little bit faster so it would take away that late tail on the ball, and I succeeded on some of the shots, but even so, as you notice, it came in and drove right through. But uh, that's what makes it an interesting game. Nice to win sitting there. And yeah. your opponent needs a spare to win and leaves up the 4 5 seven. Well, when he let the ball go, it looked very good. I thought he was going to uh, carry it. He did. Well, it looked like it up there, too. We'll repeat these scores. The winner, Joe Kristoff, and a squeaker here over Jack Adelot. The totals 584 for Kristoff, 576 for Adelot. It's still Bobby Kowalik and Lindy Farragelli with 1418 and 1360. How about a little. Appreciation here for these two boys doing a great job. <laughs> now we've asked uh, Joe Kristoff to stay with us here for just a moment, and Joe, uh, uh, being a fellow that uh, knows a lot about how how to drill balls and a lot of different ideas as to how balls should be drilled, uh, maybe you might give the boys out there and the girls a little advice on the way a bowling ball should be drilled or what you think your theories are. In well, that way. You I just take this and I tell certainly will, Fred. Uh, so many people, uh, when they ask the professional bowlers what type of bowling ball they bowl, you'll see that many of the pros have their own particular grips. But uh, one thing that they don't realize is that uh, today in the Professional Bowling Association, uh, over 60% of the bowlers still bowl with a conventional type ball, and that is a ball where after you insert your thumb into the ball and you lay your hand across the ball, your second joint that is the crease of the second joint, will lay across the inner part of the finger hole a quarter of an inch. Maybe I can demonstrate that with a bowling ball just a little more thoroughly here. You'll notice here, after I lay my hand across the ball, that the, the inner edge of the finger hole will be a quarter of an inch past the inner edge. I believe they got a pretty good close-up on that. And if the people that average about 170 or under come into this and stay with this type of bowling ball, I feel that the accuracy and control of the bowling ball is more important. So many of the times the people try to hook the ball and they lose all uh, sense of direction, and there's where the average goes. Thank you very much. Joe Kristoff, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Joe. Good luck to you.
Well, try to join us again next week here on Championship Bowling from the Strike and Spare Lane to Northbrook, Illinois. We'll have another good one for you, and we hope that uh, possibly somebody can crack into the top spot there. It's still Bobby Kowalik and Lindy Farragalli. We'll see you next week. Fred Wolf just saying keep them bowling out there. Championship Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us to produce Championship Bowling.